The next step, step four, is inserting your task into project. Now it's here that you need to decide, do I want to be specific or do I want to be generic? Let me show you specific, for example. In this specific example, I have literally written things that I need to do in this particular shutdown. But what if I want to be generic? Let me show you that. Here I've been very generic where I've just used terms like summary task, subtask, etc. Let me type a couple in just so you can see. So for example, I might put summary task here. Um, I might actually even just click on this, hold the control key and drag the bottom edge of it to duplicate it. So control drag duplicates if I click on subtask, hold the control key and drag the bottom edge of it down, I've made a duplicate. Or I could have just typed it or I could have just copied and pasted it. If I click this, for example, and go Control c and then go down and go Control v I've just copied and pasted it. I need this repeated several times, so I'll go 1, 2, 3 with a thin black cross, and that just fills it down. So I've created some subtasks and some sub-subtasks and some summary tasks. I might want to change the summary task if I just click it and then press F2, which is Edit. I'll change this to a 2. If I click on this task, press the function key F2, I can backspace the 1 and put a 3. And so those are my summary tasks. You can easily select a row, like row 6 for example, and delete it. And you can easily go undo with this button here or control Z to get it back. You can easily edit a task simply by clicking it and pressing F2 and typing something. I can then press undo and undo that. I can easily move things up and down. I can, for example, click on row 10 and simply drag this edge of this row down and move this task down or drag it and move it back up. So you can rearrange tasks just by dragging the edge of it or you can duplicate it by control dragging the edge of it. You can also copy and paste, you can also delete, and you can also press F2 for edit. I'm going to leave my task as generic tasks for my template. We're now up to step five. Step five is outlining. All of these tasks that we have in our template are all on the same level. You are able to indent up to nine levels in Microsoft Project. Let me show you. Now I'm going to avoid using my mouse. That's another time saver. I do watch people with project and they tend to grab their mouse and click on this, grab their mouse and click on the next one down, which is actually a waste of time. You should be using your up and down arrows because you're much faster moving up and down through your list of tasks. So I'm going up to the first task called summary task one. And now I'm going to go down one and I want to select from row two to row nine. So I hold the shift key and I hit the down arrow. Shift down arrow will let me select that group of tasks. Now I want to indent them so they come under the summary task one. Now looking at the task tab in the ribbon, you've got two buttons. This one is indent task and this one's outdent task. So I literally could indent those tasks and summary task now goes bold. In fact, its entire row goes bold. It also acquires a black triangle in the front of its name. And also it now appears as a staple, a black staple on the Gantt chart. If I outdent those tasks, then they no longer sit under summary task, and therefore summary task is no longer bold and is no longer technically a summary task. So indent with this button, outdent with this button. But notice when you rest on them, there are shortcut keys. So if you work a lot in project and spend a lot of time in project, you may want to start adopting some of the shortcut keys. And we learnt in an earlier video that pressing the insert key is an easier way to insert a task and delete if I select the entire row is a quick way to delete one or more tasks okay so I'm going to go shift down arrow and I'm going to use the shortcut key to indent which is alt shift right arrow alt shift right arrow indents alt shift left alt shift left arrow out dents so I'm going to indent these tasks which means that I can now collapse rows 2 to 9 and it immediately goes from row 1 to 10. So I collapse the amount of detail I'm seeing and I can expand it again. Okay, so I'm arrowing down to this row 11, shift down to here 
and then alt shift right arrow to indent then I arrow down to here shift down arrow to here alt shift right arrow to indent because you can indent more than once I'm going to go down here and indent this group alt shift right arrow and I'm going to go down here select this group and alt shift right arrow and indent them so you can create an outline structure now we are now able to collapse and expand using the little black triangle but another way is to go to view in the ribbon and go to outline and ask to see level one if you ask to see level one you only see your top summary tasks if I go back to outline and ask to see level two I get the next level and if I ask to see level three I get all the details but notice you can have up to nine levels of indenting and all subtasks will always bring everything back okay so create your outline structure now another thing that's missing I think from this template are milestones we really should have significant dates inserted into our project so I'm going to put a milestone at the foot of summary task 1, summary task 2 and summary task 3 I'm just going to press the insert key on my keyboard while I'm sitting in row 10 which inserts a row and I'm going to call it milestone now to create a milestone is to enter a duration of 0 so I'm going to type 0 and press enter and a milestone appears as a diamond with a date on your Gantt chart I'll go down here insert milestone duration 0 down here insert milestone duration 0 and I've inserted three milestones significant dates into my template But before we leave the topic of outlining in this particular step 5, the other thing that's important is whether we include in our template a WBS column or whether we turn on outline numbering. Let me start with outline numbering because it's the quicker of the two to show you. If I go to Gantt chart format in the ribbon, there is an option here I can tick called outline number. And when I tick it, I literally can see now an outline number applied to each task. So I can see this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. So outline numbering is actually really helpful when you want to see the outline structure of your project. But maybe I don't turn on outline number and instead I want to insert a column called WBS. Right click the task name column and insert column. Press W to jump down to WBS. WBS is a project management term which is short for work breakdown structure and I'll just adjust the column width and the work breakdown structure basically assigns a unique number to each task and a lot of project managers like to work with the work breakdown structure now the other thing you can decide is because it is a number it should be right aligned so on the Gantt chart format tab in the ribbon you have the option to align to the right and if you do that it looks more numerical okay so decide do you want WBS or do you want outline numbering I'm actually going to hide WBS right click and hide that column and actually prefer to tick the outline number and I'm going to work with that in this video step six durations this is the amount of time you're going to put aside or allow for something to be completed now we are working in a very generic sort of template so we're just going to put some durations in um, just to show you what you can do here of course these will be adjusted when the real tasks are put in the durations that have a question mark are durations that project entered because we're not able to put a question mark in and so the question marks tell me that I haven't actually gone through and put any durations in except for the milestones this is zero this is zero this is zero without a question mark which means I must have put them in now if I enter just a one say for this row here the question mark disappears and it does default to days um, you are able to set up whether your default is days or hours or minutes because you can enter um, let's give you an example 10 M which is 10 minutes you can enter 10 H which is 10 hours you can enter 10 D days and you can enter 10 W weeks and you can enter 10 M O which is months and th theoretically you should be able to enter 10 Y which is years but it's never been that successful let's have a look under file and options there are some options I want to set up for this particular project template 
Um, under schedule, for example, your duration is entered in days by default. So that's why you're able to enter just a pure number into the duration column and it will default to days. You can customize that if you want for this particular project template. Notice these are the options for this template. So you could say, oh look, for this template, I always want to just put a number in it defaults to hours. But I'm going to stick with days because that's difficult. Under advanced, you've also got options you can set also for this particular project. For this particular project, I want minutes to show just as an M, for hours to show as an H, days to show as a D, W for weeks, MO for months, and Y for years. So that's for this particular project, not all new projects. Um, so when I go OK, these will be truncated, and I think it makes it easier and cleaner to read having those truncated duration units. So I'm just going to actually put um, 5, 2, now 5D, um, 1D, and I might just click on that 1D and use the thin black cross and just fill it down to here. So I get rid of the question marks. So immediately 5, 2, 1, 1, 0, those are the durations. Now the start and the finish is determined by the earliest start date and the latest finish date of that summary tasks subtasks. And so this five days and these dates are derived. Do not type the duration or the start and finish into any summary task, otherwise you would change the task mode from being auto scheduled to being manually scheduled. Manually scheduled means it shows as a pin and it means that you will manually have to keep that task up to date from now on. I prefer it to be auto scheduled where it starts to work out the date based on the durations and based on the relationships between tasks. So have your task mode always set to auto schedule and if necessary fill it all the way down so all tasks are auto scheduled and if necessary go into file and options and also make sure under schedule that you're working with auto scheduled new tasks are auto scheduled for this project so for this project all tasks are auto scheduled all of them are scheduled from a start date they default to days by default as far as the duration and OK. And this is all part of this template, which we should save hitting this button here or Control S on a regular basis so we don't lose anything. All right, let's get busy with these subtasks. So you only enter durations for subtasks. I'm just going to enter 5, 4, 3. And there you are there. And here I'm going to enter 5, 4, 3, 2. All right, so it's just a template sitting here. People will overwrite these with the actual name of the summary task and the actual name of the subtask and the actual duration they want to see. But we're giving them a template to start from so that they've got something to work with. Now practice what you've learned, absorb what we've covered, and I'll see you in the next video.